Okay, so what I'm going to be doing this game is a little strategy strategy that I think is viable with the new Onyx Shark patch. Um, because bikes against DAC haven't really got the strength. Oh, bikes with DAC don't have their strength as much anymore. They don't have that reverse gear. It makes them a bit more difficult to hunt down scouts and maintain max distance from them. So... I'm going for that two scout build against Dak and transitioning into artillery observers and trying to hold out the center best I can using line of sight blockers to position the artillery beacon behind and then work my way up the map from there whilst holding green cover positions and forcing the Dak player to push into me. And if they don't push into me and they're holding green cover themselves, eventually the arty beacon will rain down some artillery on them so we'll see how it pans out so i can't access the artillery observers straight away i gotta wait till one cp but usually that comes soon after getting the third rifle and building the medic tent as well uh, my opponent this game is beamer benz and bentley he's in the top 150 or so players he's got italian infantry Combined arms and espionage in his loadout. So we'll get the second rifle out. I haven't seen him yet. I haven't heard him yet either. And then when I do see him, I just want to try maintain max distance and just sit in cover. I, like, I don't have a strong army at the moment. Um, especially with that second scout. My strength is just holding green cover here. Figuring out where he is, and I've got the vision advantage, and just picking the engagement that best suits me. So I'll jump into the green cover here, I'll back out of this one. I might be able to cap that from max range. Nope, he's got a shot on me. So we just back out. Ooh, so he does have a bike. You don't see bikes too often now. So we'll just go around the corner. If he comes forward, we jump on him. Like that. <laughs> and I think he did see me there, so... I'm going to push forward here, take that green cover position, get my third rifle out. Focus down that hurt squad, since I do have the... range advantage there. We'll retreat that. Keep on just running around circles against him. Get the medic center up. And you can see this. This is what I mean. Like, you can just run circles around him. Whereas this wouldn't have happened previously because of that reverse gear. So, let's get the RD observers out. Hold this green cover in the middle. And I want to start putting down some beacons. A really nice place for a beacon is anywhere behind Fog of War. Oh, behind shop lockers. So it might be here. It might be behind here. Behind this building as well. Wherever I can find a gap, I'll place them in there. Let's get nice and close here, if possible. Just so I can deny the cap. Oh, I just missed out. That's okay. Oh, wrong side. Bit unfortunate there. Alright, I'm going to push that there. And we'll build a beacon just here. So I think if I, I think if I go for the um, hold down ability on the RD observers there, once I've built it, I think I'm in range to hit this house, which I am. So that's what I want to do. I just want to maintain max range and harass him wherever I can. I think that's an MG. Yep. So let's just back up. 
Ready for deployment, sir. And we'll start taking up now as well. I'll get an engineer out too. Oh no, I don't want to go mechanized. I want to go for air support. All right, it looks like he's moved away from that house, so a better decision here is just to get that guy moving. One thing to take note of, once you stop supervising, the counter gets restarted, so you don't want to... You have to be mindful of that. You can be wasting your artillery observer's time if you're standing still. I'm also getting the utility package for the smoke and the flares so that I can see better where he's going to be positioned, especially because he is getting out... Um, MGs, and I, w I don't want to push into an MG and pop a, uh, pop a beating from a big burst. So I'll shoot the smoke there. We might get a flank off with those squads. That's going to cut the firing line down. I'm also going to shoot the flare behind that smoke so I can see him, but he can't see me. And then just hold green cover, jump into that house, and I'll run out the other side of that so I don't get burnt. Well, I can actually stay there because they are shooting down that squad and forcing him to move. And we've got a flank there, and then this is going to be a really nice strafe path. So I'll strafe there, and now we push. Push, push, push whilst the MG's pinned. Might be able to focus it down, but that's not going to be the case. And then we'll jump into these cover locations. I'm just going to decap that. I'm going to retreat that squad. And I want to get another beacon down here behind there. And I'm going to support it best I can with some mines. Get the motor pull out. Pop a recon run to see which way he's coming out of his base by. I don't want to fully cap that. I just want to decap it. And this one, we're going to activate that to get the fast recharge ready. So as he comes out of his base, I'll be ready to barrage him. These guys, I'm just going to sit in cover. And then we just brace for impact when he comes out of here by sitting in the green cover. Now I am going for motor pool. So I'm going to get out an M8 in a moment. We can see he's pushing this direction. And that's the other benefit of using the RD. Um radio beacons it lets you know which direction they're coming from without having sufficient vision i will shoot a smoke there because i Ooh, actually i'm gonna back up this way and then just retreat i'm i've just put in a few shift commands you can see it are along that wall and let's just keep mining up the center here territory point is no longer under our control oh i didn't realize that I'll get bars next with the M8. Let's retreat that artillery observer as well. It's a bit away from Vet 1, I think, so. Retreat him. I got some nice mines down here. So they'll help me protect these beacons. Where's that other beacon? Ah, it's shooting there. Okay. So I'm really hurting him here with the VP drain, which is nice. Ah, he does have a flak too. So I'll have to retreat that. I was caught just a little bit out of position. And if I lose that, that's all right. They only cost 50, muni 50 manpower. I will start building him more in safer positions though. That provided me with a lot of reconnaissance though. Um, it got in two barrages. Made it awkward for him. So in my eyes, that is a win. What we're going to do here, I'm going to charge this in, but I'm going to call in the recon run first. So it's going to force the guns to face the other direction. And then I'm going to bring in the M8. So you can see, like, doing that, it gets me a few free shots, potentially. Uh, but the shots did miss. <laughs> but we take what we can. And I'm just going to set up a bit of a... Oh, that, he didn't actually kill that. That's nice. And it's about to recharge. If I can defend it just a little bit longer. 
I'll get an anti-tank gun next as well. And it usually, it targets the closest unit, so it's going to shoot at that building. It shouldn't fire at those pioneers. We'll get healing on these guys in the south. And then try flank that squad in that position there. So there we go. It's going to clear out the villa. I want to just take that green cover there. You have three command points available. We're going to just keep repairing through that. All right, he finally wins it. I will shoot off a flare. And we'll just back up here. And sit behind that building. So if he tries to cap it, I'll push him off and just keep on capping the north. Ooh, that was a nice little sniping shot, though. So back out there. I'm going to get the plane upgrade so I can keep on recon running and him not shoot down my plane, which is also important because I don't want to give him I don't want to give him free veterancy either. These guys have to come back up onto the field. We'll park this anti-tank gun like that. And I'm going to have to retreat that, which is no problem. But once this recon run's ready, I will have to send a recon run because I need to figure out where his MG is. Oh, oops. I forgot to click that. Get that repairing. I think his MG's probably somewhere around there, though. I'm going to shoot a flare here just to make sure it is safe to cap. Nice. That's a nice hit. And I'm going to do here a combination hit. I'm going to use the recon run. That's going to draw the fire. And then I'm going to strafe through like that. So the recon run is taking the damage from that plane. Uh, from the flak. And then the strafe is going to come in through that direction. And it's forced that MG to lose a half its health. Which is going to make it right for the killing. Nice. We got a good hit in there. We're going to rush everything forward now and start capping up the south of the map. And loop around at the back there. His anti-tank gun is somewhere. I don't know where, but we'll figure it out. Let's move that rifle in as well. Anti-tank gun's out of range, so I'm just going to bring it backwards here. Oh no, there we go. We won the game. So you can see, this this strategy does have its place. Um, I still haven't versed someone that's gone for like a 250 base build with assault grenadiers against it. Um, but in this kind of static play style that we're seeing from DAC now, where they're using battle group with the espionage, they're building up their infantry mass... Uh, using a death ball to move across the map. It gives you the ability to control key positions and at times even reveal where their, where their invisible ball may be moving. But in this case, my opponent didn't go for espionage. They've gone for a different battle group. But you can still see it still has its role regardless. Yeah, it's a fun way to play. I'll show the stats. So it's all about just getting that map control and then maintaining it. And that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye.